What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so I've been thinking about this for the last couple days or so on um, on like making up a story because it's been a long time since we made up a story and I feel like I feel like we kind of need to because it's been a little while. So in this one, we're going to make up a story on the, the Hulk who laughs like Joker Hulk. And of course, this is based on the Batman who laughs. But the idea of the of the, like the Joker becoming the Incredible Hulk sounds so awesome, but like it could unfold in like a myriad of different ways. Okay, so so here's the way here's the way I see this. All right, here's the way I see this going down. So so one, we'd have to explain how it is the Joker becomes the Hulk, right? And I mean, it's comic books, so we can just kind of do whatever we want to do. Like we could say, for example, that like in this alternate DC universe, that Marvel Comics exist as actual comic books they buy and read. So like the Joker knows who Captain America is in comic books because he's been reading Captain America comics uh, in Spider-Man or something like that. But let's say that like for whatever reason, the Joker likes the Incredible, oh no, okay. The Joker likes the Incredible Hulk because the Incredible Hulk is chaos, right? Like the Incredible Hulk is pandemonium. Like whenever it is the Hulk goes on like a rampage, there's no telling what's gonna happen and like the Joker loves that element he likes the idea that like the Incredible Hulk's unpredictable and so the Joker's like I want to become the Incredible Hulk and so by whatever manner and whatever means he uses all of his money resources or whatever and basically like imitates the gamma bomb experiment and so the result is that Joker is transformed into the Incredible Hulk now here's the thing we can't really do like Savage Hulk I mean we could but it would take away from the story I would think because I think it'd be, it'd be an easier story to tell if we said that like we get basically Professor Hulk where it's like the Joker and the Incredible Hulk merge into a singular person or like they're kind of like a singular being but like it's the unlimited strength of the incredible hulk with like the mind of the joker like that would that would be absolutely amazing so like we would have i mean we could go with like this version of the incredible hulk is just green because i mean the joker you know is green purple and red so we could just go with like and, and white so we can go with like the green hulk uh maybe he has green hair maybe he has like you know the the joker lipstick on or whatever it is but like he's basically jokerized like that'd be the coolest thing ever but here's here's where i think the story would get cool like here's where i think it would get awesome so we could say that because of the fact that this is is the Incredible Hulk with the Joker's mind, then we can say the Joker kind of got a little bit smarter, right? Because like by and large in, in DC Comics, the Joker just like does things, right? Like he just does stuff. Like Heath Ledger's Joker quoted it perfectly. I'm just a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught one. So that's basically how the Joker works in DC Comics. I mean, he can be really, really smart. Like he was a new 52 Batman, but let's say that like in this instance, instead of just saying like, I want to just go smash stuff. All right, he's like, we're going to play this out intelligently. So what he does is he takes the approach of Bane. Now for those of you guys who don't know, Bane of course got his like huge claim to fame during Nightfall. It came the year after, uh, Bat or I'm sorry, after Superman died. People say they weren't really connected. I really believe they were because Superman dying was such a huge thing in publicity. They were like, well, let's, let's take away Batman. Let's break Batman's back. We can't really kill him, but let's break his back and then have somebody else take his place. And so, um, so what ended up happening is DC introduced Bane and Bane was a guy where he essentially was like, he was enamored by the bat of Gotham city. Like, you know, this, this, you know, kind of mythical figure that existed out there. And it essentially just like gained control of the city, like, you know, gained control of the criminal element. And like, for the most part, kept criminals like suppressed. And so because he was more of like a mythological being and Bane wanted the challenge, Bane traveled to Gotham City and in like three or four months figured out the identity of Batman. He was like, yeah, so like Batman's Bruce Wayne. Okay, cool. So let's take him out. So then like he broke Batman's back, but it was, it, it was a long time coming. It was like shadow games and stuff like that. It was like he would pop up and then like taunt Batman and then leave. Like he would just show up every once in a while. And so like the Joker would do that, right? Like the Joker would sit down and say, okay, we're going to consolidate power. Like that's what we're going to do. We're going to consolidate all my power in Gotham City and then I'll take out Batman because I don't want anybody to get to Batman before I do. But he wouldn't do it all at once. It wouldn't be like all in one night, right? Like it would just be like shadow games and stuff like that. And so what he would do is he would he would say, okay, I'm going to take out the penguin. And so like the penguin's defeated. And then you don't hear from him for like another month and a half or two months. And that's why Batman can't find him. Because like when Batman, because Batman would figure out something's going on pretty quickly. I would imagine Batman would probably, probably say like, okay, this is like another vigilante. Because like the Joker can turn back into himself at will. He can like become the, the Jokerized Hulk or just turn back into regular Joker. And that's what he does. Like he'll He'll, he'll turn into like Jokerized Hulk and then like take out the Penguin and then go back to his normal self and then do his regular schemes. And Batman's none the wiser. Batman hasn't figured out what's going on. And so because he pops up so infrequently, Batman's just kind of like, I'm not really sure where this guy's at or what's going on. Is he like a vigilante? Is he trying to help me? Is he an enemy? Is he trying to conquer the city? Like Batman wouldn't really know what's happening. And so this would go on for the better part of like a year, right? Like it'd be like a month and a half after Joker's dead. And I'm sorry, after Penguin's dead. And then Joker would kill Two-Face. And then like three months would pass. And then Joker would kill like the Riddler. And like what he would do is 
was he would literally like consolidate all the henchmen and stuff like that. But the henchmen would all go under the guise of like the Hulk, right? And so like Batman's idea is, okay, maybe it's like the Hulk who laughs is like just this army of people is all it is. They call themselves the Hulk because they're like a hulking number of people. But Batman couldn't quite figure it out. And so eventually what would happen is like all the villains in Gotham City would be destroyed except for the Joker. And then that's when Batman would finally figure out the Joker is like the Hulk who laughs because he's the only one that hasn't been taken out yet and, and, and hasn't been like killed. The Joker would set it up so that like his own bases had been targeted and it seems like they'd been hit and different things like that to throw Batman off the trail. But then from there, like Batman would say, okay, so like he would find, like he'd face off against the, the, the Hulk who laughs and like it would be, it would be like just an absolute bloodbath. Like it would be a murdering, like Batman wouldn't die, but he would get his, his, his backside handed to him quite readily. So like Batman gets totally decimated by the Hulk who laughs and he's like, okay, I need backup here. Now remember this is, this is Joker with the Incredible Hulk's unlimited strength, but it's not like just unlimited at the outset, right? Like he has to get angrier in order to get stronger. And so like what they need is a catalyst. Like what we need for this story is a catalyst to piss him off in order to like set his powers in motion. So what would happen is Batman would go to the Justice League and say, I need help with this. I can't defeat this guy on my own. And so what, what would happen from there is like, they would all basically meet up and Batman would say like, here's everything that's going on. Here's everything that's happening. Here's everything I've learned. But Batman has learned that like the Joker gets stronger, the angrier he gets. And so he would basically tell Superman, hey, look, like when we go into this fight, you're on a ticking clock. You cannot let this fight drag on too long. If you do, he will get stronger than you and he will destroy you. And so it's just like, like they go in and Batman's got like this great big huge plan. And let's say it's like the classic roster of the Justice League, right? So like Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, The Flash, Barry Allen, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, and like for good measure, um, maybe Martian Manhunter. But I kind of like keeping it at those five, like those, those core five people, Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Like I like keeping it at those five. So like they show up and, uh, and that's, that's the catalyst that sets the Joker off because, because like one thing to always remember, the Joker's basically in love with Batman. It's always the idea that like the fights they engage in, that's like the Batman Joker dance. It's like, this is our dance. No one's allowed to be in our dance. And so when Batman is like bringing other people in, it's like, it's like, it's like Jack Nicholson Joker, right? You know, it's like another rooster in the hen house. Like that's basically what happens. Like there's, you know, like, like they show up and the Joker gets pissed because he's like, you, you, you totally destroyed this. This was supposed to be our dance. And so like, that's what sets off his anger. And so like, as soon as the Justice League shows up and like the Joker starts getting pissed off, the clock starts and like Superman's facing off against like, you know, the, the Hulk who laughs as best he can for as long as he can. Now, everybody else is there too, right? Like Wonder Woman's getting shots in. She's like sending them flying, you know, and like the Flash, Barry Allen's doing his whole thing, you know, doing, you know, running around and like trying to punch him, you know, all that kind of, uh, kind of good stuff. And Batman's like the brains behind the operation, right? Like Batman's like, hey, look, do this, do that, you know, and so on and so forth. And like trying to figure out a way to power this guy down. And so like, as the fight begins to stretch on, the Joker begins to realize what's happening. That like, they're trying to take him out as fast as possible to make sure he doesn't get so strong that he can outmatch them all. And so what he does is he actually like jumps away, like jumps to Metropolis or something like that, right? Where, cause like Superman is like the main threat, right? He's like the powerhouse. He's like the formidable threat. So super, so he like jumps away and like travels to Metropolis like Doomsday did. And then just starts like tearing apart the Daily Planet and like goes, like knocks the building down to the foundation and just sends it like crashing down. And so like Superman has to race in and save who he can. And Batman's like, no, 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 you have to let him die. You have to let him die. We have to stop like Hulk, you know, Hulk who laughs. Cause if we don't, more people will die. And Superman's like, I don't care. I'm not letting Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen die. So like he flies into the Daily Planet and like in the time it takes him to like rescue them, the, the strength of the Joker has surpassed Superman. So Superman comes back in and he's just getting like decimated. And like if Superman's getting decimated, Wonder Woman's getting decimated. And like we can we can even throw in Shazam and say like Shazam's getting decimated. We can just say like he showed up because whatever. The old man, the, the old wizard told him to go. So hey, go boy. Like things are getting crazy, man. Go. And he's just like Shazam. And then he shows up and fights. And then like like Barry Allen has this idea, right? Barry Allen's like, hey, I have an idea. I have a way on we, you know, that we can beat him. And Batman's like, what is it? He's like, I'll do the infinite mass punch. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's Wally's move. Wally knows how to do the infinite mass punch. You don't. Barry's like, yeah, well, Wally's not here. So I got this, man. So like, so, so it's, Batman's like, no, 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 don't do that, man. Don't do that. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And Barry's like, no, man, I got this. So he like races around the world like three times, right? And then just like comes running up on like the whole coup last and like hits him with the infinite mass punch. He's like, infinite mass punch and like hits him and it just like staggers him. And Batman's like, oh my God, right? It's, it's like El Presidor said in that Sandy Ravage live commentary. You didn't beat him. You just pissed him off and now you so, so like, so like, like Batman's, Batman's like, all right, dude, you, you totally screwed us over. Like, like, like he's so pissed. Like he's way more pissed now than he was before. So like, we're basically doomed. Like we're, we're facing off against this guy with an incalculable level of strength. Who's already insane. And then in turn, like has defeated pretty much all of the justice league and me as Batman, I'm the last man standing. So having said all that, this is your all's turn. <laughs>
<laughs> I want you guys to tell me how this story ends because I, I was sitting here trying to think of an ending and I couldn't think of a good one. Like, like I'd kind of written myself into a hole, right? Like I'm like M. Light, I'm, I'm M. Night Shyamalan. I can't just, I can't write a good story. Uh, well, at least I couldn't write a good story for like seven years. And then I wrote Split, which was an amazing movie. But like, anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think. Like, like, like give me, give me the ending of this story down in the comments section. I really want to know what you guys come up with. Like, I'm really excited to see how you guys end this. But if you guys are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Core. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and yeah, I will catch you all later. Peace.